basically, um, about four and a half, five months ago, I, I started looking at Siemens Somatic S7 PLCs, and I decided to uh, get a hold of the S7 1200s because they were the least expensive of the PLC family. Um, the reason uh, Siemens uh, was sort of selected was based on, of course, like Tom was saying, Stuxnet, it's, I sort of fell into it as well. And the, uh, the point of the, the research initially, what motivated me was, I wanted to try and debunk some of the myths that were spread by Ralph Langner about how it would have taken a nation state uh, with millions of dollars in funding um, and a team of talented researchers to develop uh, an offensive weapon that could be used and deployed in the field against a critical infrastructure. So I wanted to try and debunk that by doing it myself in my bedroom. Um, and I did it in two and a half weeks, and I was juggling two other projects at work, working uh, often until 4 a.m. and sending out emails to DHS at around 5 a.m and then answering phone calls at 9 a.m. Um, so <clears throat> I did this uh, for several months. Um, Siemens then came back and said that there was basically nothing to, to be concerned about because the 300s and boards weren't in fact affected by the replay attacks, which was just one vulnerability that I had discovered in the PLCs. Uh, I went back to my employer and I got some more funding from them <clears throat> and I got my hands on two S7 300s and confirmed uh, my suspicion uh, that the uh, S7 300 and 400 were in fact affected by the replay attacks. The reason being is, is that I knew that they operated using the same protocol, which is ISO TSAP, and the TSAP is layered on top of TCP, so it only made sense to me that the other products would in fact be affected as well. So I ran my exploit code against them uh, and developed new exploit code and tweaked it, and then I started looking further into the products, and that's when I discovered the back door, the command shell, uh, in the Somatic S7-300. Um, it took me approximately two and a half hours to write 12, the 12 lines of code to decode. The encoded password, I wouldn't say encrypted, it was more encoded. <clears throat> Once I realized that that password allowed me to access the shell, I realized that I could actually do other things that weren't, uh, that weren't developed or designed in the firmware to be used in the field by plant owners and operators. Um, this was more or less something that an internal development team would use to dump memory from the PLC to look for what they what they call errors or bugs in the uh, firmware. What I found though was it's a lot of information pertaining to connections coming in and out of the PLC, meaning that if a plant owner or operator was connecting their engineering workstation to the PLC, you could dump that memory and capture passwords or look at the passwords that have been set for the PLC to protect it. Um, I also realized that I could actually take control of the PLC uh, using that method along with the other method of replaying PCAPs, uh, which would allow me to reprogram the programmable logic on the controller. Something that we saw with Stuxnet, which is different from my attack, is that Stuxnet pivoted off of the engineering workstation, whereas I eliminated that need and I'm attacking the PLC directly, um, which makes it kind of unique in a way. Um, <clears throat> I think that this, uh, this now creates awareness. Uh, it's not only nation states that have this capability. Um, now it's in the hands of private researchers and it's only a matter of time before um, criminal elements will get their hands on this type of code and, and probably use it to uh, cause damage to control systems. Um, the, the big issue there is really attribution. If somebody in, say, the People's Republic of China attacks the United States, we can't necessarily point the finger back at the Chinese government because it might be just some lone hacker um, who got his hands on some PLCs. Um, just because you, you see stuff in the media, in the cyber war hype, that, that it's been spread by maybe somebody who is trying to sell you on an idea that, that this was a nation state to make it a better story, it doesn't necessarily make it true. We still don't have any factual evidence as to where Stuxnet came from.